The naval battle of Dungeness took place on 30 November 1652, during the First Anglo-Dutch War near the Cape of Dungeness in Kent. Background in September 1652 the Government of the Commonwealth of England, the Council of State, mistakenly believing that the United Provinces after their defeat at the Battle of the Kentish Knock would desist from bringing out a fleet so late in the season, sent away ships to the Mediterranean and the Baltic. At the same time the largest English vessels remained in repair and active ships were undermanned as sailors deserted or rioted because their wages were in arrears. This left the English weakened and badly outnumbered in home waters. Meanwhile the Dutch were making every effort to reinforce their fleet. Dutch trade interests demanded that their navy would make a final effort to convoy merchantmen to the south. Battle. On 21 November 1652 Old Style, the 1st of December New Style, Lieutenant Admiral Martin Tromp, again Supreme Commander after his successor Vice Admiral Witt Dewitt had suffered a breakdown because of his defeat of the Battle of the Kentish. Knock. Set sail from the naval port of Hellefort Slaus with 88 men of war and five fireships, escorting a vast convoy of 270 merchantmen bound for France, the Mediterranean and the Indies. At first, unfavorable southwestern gales forced him to return but on 23 November he again sailed south with the convoy, accompanied by 16 warships, safely delivered through the Straits of Dover, Trump turned to the west in search of the English, and on 29 November 1652 he discovered the English fleet of 42 capital ships and 10 smaller vessels anchored between the landheads of North Foreland and South Foreland, commanded by General at Sea Robert Blake. After a council of war in which it was decided to avoid battle, the English promptly left their anchorage in the Downs, sailing south. This has been explained by Blake not realizing how large the Dutch fleet was, or by his fearing to become trapped like the Spanish had some years earlier in the Battle of the Downs. The wind was now strong from the northwest, so the English could not return to the Downs in any case, having to settle for Dover. The English fleet swiftly rounded South Foreland while the Dutch were unable to reach them, both fleets anchoring in the evening at about five miles distance. During the night a storm dispersed some Dutch vessels. Next morning, at noon the two fleets began to move southwest, with the English hugging the coast and the Dutch keeping some distance. Both forces were separated by the Riff Raff and the Van Shoal and therefore unable to engage. Ultimately the curve of the shoreline, the Cape of Dungeness or the Hook of the Shingles, jutting out, forced the English to turn on a southerly course. Between the Van Shoal and Dungeness a narrow exit exists. Blake had hoped to escape through it but when he arrived already about 17 Dutch ships were waiting for him. Nevertheless he continued his maneuver. At about 1500, the leading ships of both fleets met in what a contemporary account called the bounteous rhetoric of powder and bullet. Blake's triumph was the first larger ship to sail through the exit. At that moment Trump's breeder ode arrived and the Dutch commander immediately hoisted the red blood flag as a sign to attack. Blake, noticing this, tacked across the bow of the breeder ode, giving his opponent a broadside. In response, Trump also tacked and fired a salvo. The next English ship, the Garland, then moved between the Triumph and the Breeder Ode in an attempt to cross the latter's bow also. This failed however, the Garland ramming the bow of the Breeder Ode at starboard with such force that both ships remained entangled. The snout and bowsprit of the Breeder Ode broke off. The larger crew of the Breeder Ode swiftly boarded the Garland. Trump encouraged his men by promising a reward of 500 guilders to the first who would strike the English flag. One sailor climbed into the main mast of the Garland and replaced the St. George's Cross with the Prince's flag. In despair, Captain Richard Batten blew up his own upper deck to drive away the Dutch. Meanwhile the third English ship to arrive, the Antony Bun Adventure, grappled the port of the Breed Road, covering the deck of the Dutch ship with canister shot. It soon forced its crew below deck. 
Noticing the plight of his commander, Vice Admiral Johann Evertsen in turn boarded the port of the Antony Bonaventure with his Hollandia, so that four ships were now attached. In ferocious fighting his men, losing 60, killed the entire crew of the Antony Bonaventure, including Captain Walter Hoxton. When Trump's secretary, standing next to him, was killed by a musket ball, he exhorted the combined crews of the Brederode and the Hollandia to assault the Garland, exclaiming, Children, things cannot go on this way. It's the Morus. The Garland was taken, with 60 killed out of a crew of 150, including Captain Batten. At this point the Garland was in a bad condition, her rudder largely having been shot away. Blake tried to assist the Garland and the Antony Bonaventure, but was constantly attacked by Dutch flagships such as the Princes Louise of Johan de Liefde and the Manikandam of Peter Floris. The Triumph nearly avoided being grappled at both sides by the Princes Louise and the Golden Beer of Captain Jan de Hayes. Blake received little support from the remainder of the English fleet. When the happy entrance entered the channel, she was at once assaulted and only with difficulty managed to extract herself. The other English ships began to understand the tactical situation. The exit functioned as a bottleneck and trying to force it would only allow the Dutch to overpower the English ships one by one. On the other hand, most Dutch ships did not engage either. Annoyed, Commodore Michiel de Reuter on the Whitlam entered the exit in the opposite direction to attack the mass of the English ships but no one followed him and he was forced to withdraw. He complained in his journal, If we had any help, yea, of but ten or twelve ships, we would have beaten the entire fleet. Despite the tactical difficulties, it was unacceptable to leave Blake to his fate. The two most heavily armed English vessels apart from the Triumph, the Vanguard and the Victory, used their superior firepower to break the Dutch opposition and allowed Blake to retreat and join the English main force. The Triumph had lost her four topmast and Blake had been wounded. Around 1700, the onset of darkness ended the battle. A large part of the Dutch fleet had not even arrived yet. The English fleet by nightfall had lost five ships. These included the captured Garland and Antony Bonaventure that would be taken into Dutch service as the Rosencrantz and the Bonaventura. Two smaller vessels were burnt, one of them perhaps the light frigate Acorn, and one sunk. In the evening, the Dutch lost the Shedam, also known as the Gelderland because the states of Geldress had paid for her. Through fire and subsequent explosion, Captain Dirk Duenbull died from his wounds the next day. Blake that night retreated under cover of darkness to his anchorage in the Downs. The Dutch did not follow but used this time to repair the ships, especially the Breed Road. The next morning the Dutch intercepted a group of three merchantmen sailing from the west. Their guard ship, the Merlin, managed to escape, but they themselves were taken and their cargo of figs and lemons were distributed among the Dutch crews. Trump could not be satisfied with the result however as the Dutch had missed an opportunity to annihilate the English. On the 1st of December, he pursued Blake who, however, had already rounded South Foreland again. The wind turned east, which allowed Blake to quickly reach the Thames but slowed the Dutch. A group of English ships was encountered that had been sent to reinforce Blake but had sailed past him in the darkness. Two new frigates, the Ruby and the Sapphire, managed to escape, but the Hercules, an armed merchantman, was run ashore by her captain, Zachary Brown. Most of the crew fled in London the Hercules and Brown were captured by the HAEs in T. Bell to Bastian Sensen who managed to refloat the vessel. Returning to the Strait of Dover, Trump allowed his merchant convoy to split up each group of merchantmen continuing its way towards their individual destination together with their protecting warships. Trump considered to attack Blake in the Medway but despite her reward offered of 50 Flemish pounds. In the entire Dutch fleet not a single pilot could be found who dared to navigate these dangerous waters. Only in 1667, De Reuter managed to execute such an attack in the raid on the Medway. Aftermath 
The battle resulted in several reforms in the English fleet. Part of Blake's force consisted of impressed merchant vessels that retained their civilian captains, owners. Many of them refused to participate in the battle. Some naval captains insisted on their traditional right to enter and leave the battle at times of their choosing, and to leave formation in order to secure any prize. Blake threatened to resign if something was not done. The Lord's Commissioners of the Admiralty responded by requiring all impressed vessels to be under the command of naval captains, dividing the fleet into squadrons under junior flag officers for better command and control, issuing sailing and fighting instructions which significantly enhanced an admiral's authority over his fleet. The victory gave the Dutch temporary control of the English Channel and so control of merchant shipping. A legend says that Trump attached a broom to his mast as a sign that he had swept the sea clean of his enemies. But in his book The Command of the Ocean, NAM, Roger doubts the legend as such a boasting action would have been out of character for Trump. Additionally, at the time, a broom attached to a mast was the way of showing that a ship was for sale. Also Dutch contemporaneous sources make no mention of it. The battle not only showed the folly of dividing forces while the Dutch still possessed a large fleet in home waters, but exposed much baseness of spirit, not among the merchantmen only, but many of the state's ships. It seemed that the captains of hired merchant ships were reluctant to risk their vessels in combat, while the state's ships lacked the men to sail and fight them. Ships England Triumph 60 Victory 60 Vanguard 58 Fairfax 56 Speaker 54 Laurel 50 Worcester 44 Garland 44 Captured Entrance 43, Lion 42, Convertener 42, Foresight 42, Dragon 40, Fortune 36, Hound 35, Sapphire 34, Princess Maria 33, Mary Flyboat 32, Waterhound 30, Dolphin 30, Advantage 26, Swan 22, Greyhound 20, Hannibal 44, Antony Bonaventure 36 captured, Lisbon Merchant 34, Loyalty 34, Culpep of 30, Cullen 28, Prudent Mary 26, Samuel Chapter 26, Martha 25, Catherine 24, Exchange 24, Acorn 22, The Netherlands Trump Squadron Breeder Road 56, Vreda 44, Campen 40, Wappen van Holland 39, Prins 38, Groot Liefde 38, Engel Gabriel 36, Burra 34, Gideon 34, Hollandia 32, Horn 32, Rotterdam 30, Amsterdam 30, Sint Peter 28, Star 28, Gouda 28, Virgild Pelican 28, Sint Maria 28, Hollandia 26, De Reuter Squadron Bria Hyde 46, Whitlam 38, Sint Matthias 34, Kroon Imperial 34, Meerman 32, Zeelandia 32, Sheedam 30, Graf Hendrik 30, Leyden 28, Achilles 28, Arc Troyana 28, Frisia 28, Breda 28, Sferamundi 26, Goldenbeard 24, Overeersel 22, Evertsen Squadron Hollandia 38, Wappen Van Veer 38, Princes Wies 36, Golden Han 36, Wappen Van Zierig Z 34, FAAM 30, Gauden Liu 30, Gauden Luen 30, HAEs 30, Zeusha Liu 28, Zerida 28, Neptunus 28, West Capel 28, Goes 26, Leafda 26, Indra 24, Sint Joris 23, Leafda 23, Indra 18, Floris Squadron Manikin Dam 36, Wappen Van Nassau 36, Tobias 30, Castile Vane Medemblik 30, Samson 30, Wappen Vane Manikin Dam 28, 
Prinz Moritz 28, Ian Horn 28, Lars Drager 28, Princess Albertina 26, Pierre Boom 24, Virgil Schell 24.